Everybody, so here's a quick video to show you how to save a little bit of money if you are selling on eBay. Of course, you know, we sell a whole lot on eBay here. If you look at my last video, we did about $800,000 in sales on eBay in the past uh, three months. Uh, check that out, out that video, and it's gonna be riveting content, I know, about how to become a uh, top-rated seller on eBay and the advantages of why you should do that. Um, and why maybe I'm not taking advantage of that and why I maybe should, but also, you know, dealing with the volume aspect, why it might not be feasible. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to be going over some of your comments that you did in the last video, because I said I'd be answering them if you had some questions regarding, you know, anything related to selling on eBay. So here we have your seller level. Uh, I, for some reason, I can't say level very well. I, I don't really understand, but here we have my seller level is top rated. So here are kind of how you get to top rated and what kind of, uh, what do you have to be? So here it is, trans transaction defect rate. I'm at 0.16%, 15 of 9,240 transactions had defects. So transactions you canceled for being out of stock, eight. Um, for that, so that's 0.09% of transactions that I had to cancel for that. Uh, that's because, you know, we're all human here. We're we're typing in titles, even though we're checking, uh, you know, the pictures match the titles. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes randomly we'll have a duplicate listing and I have to cancel uh, on the person and just say, hey, it's a duplicate. It's already been shipped. The other person bought it. Um, you know, we're putting, we've put a lot of controls into place to kind of really, uh, you know, uh, cramp, cramp that, crimp, crimp, what, whatever, uh, clamp that down. That's, that's the word I'm trying to, Hey, it's, it's Friday. Okay. We're, it's getting through a, a busy work week, but yeah, so we've really eliminated a lot of those duplicates. We have one person, uh, you know, reviewing the other one and then, uh, cases closed without seller re resolution seven, which I'm not really, uh, honestly, seven out of 9,000 transactions. I'm not sure what the cases closed without seller re resolution really means. If I had to guess, that means someone who, uh, you know, I have no returns on any of my stuff. Someone who might run and return it for some reason other than, you know, if the case is cracked, you know, in shipping, we'll accept it. If it's uh, something that, you know, it's our fault. Um, not something like you got it and you're like, oh, you know, I don't really want this anymore. Well, it's like too bad. You know, that's, you bought it, you bid on it. You know, here it is. Um, so that's probably what those are. So as long as you are at 0.5% or less, you can get the top rated um in that category we're at 0.16 so we still uh we're pretty good uh late shipment rate two out of 8540 transactions 0 0.02 you can do three percent which is pretty pretty high i mean we're you know you should actually have tracking on everything at this point even if you're doing the uh pwe the plain white envelope because i think they provide tracking as well i'm i'm guessing if you're someone who just sells like really really cheap singles and you can't put it i guess you're just self-addressing stuff and doesn't have tracking that's where you're going to get hit with this and maybe you know if you have more than three percent you're not going to be able to get it but uh you know as long as you have it says right here if you ship on time and upload valid tracking for your buyers um and it was leave, leave feedback you're all set so there's that case is closed without sell of resolution 0.08 percent if you're 0.3 percent or less you're top rated a case closed without seller res resolution is any case that the seller is unable to resolve with the buyer prior to the buyer asking us to step in and eBay uh, determines the seller is responsible. So I guess I had seven out of 9,000 transactions that that happened. This is going to happen uh, on eBay. You're going to get, uh, you know, some buyers who are really, uh, you know, really shouldn't be asking for a return, but are, and sometimes, you know, I have a, a lot of stories about that, but you know, we're at seven out of 9,000. It's it's pretty rare. I think it's kind of overblown when everybody says, you know, oh yeah, you know, I don't want to sell on eBay because a lot there are a lot of scammers out there and there are a lot of people who are just going to be difficult dealing with. Most people are good, just like most people are just good people just want trying to live their lives. That's kind of what it is. Um, so, um, but yeah, there it is. I guess I can see cases here, which I should probably check that out. Here we have it tracking uploaded and uh, on time and validated 99.97%. You only have to be 95% or more to be that. Uh, apparently two were not uploaded at all, which I'm not sure why that would be because we print it right off eBay. Um, you know, when you do the kind of the volume we are we have, I mean, it might be, I, I don't know, I'm not even sure. Uploaded on time, but no carrier scan. 
that might be something that uh, I uploaded it and then the package was lost. We do have lost packages that happened. Um, and then we have to deal with either insurance if it's over a certain amount or I'm just gonna have to eat the cost. It's just the cost of doing business. So that's probably one of those um, that just happened. You know, you could get every single package scanned uh, or print out a form that actually has them scanned. But, you know, my, I have a very small post office and they're usually pretty busy. So most of the time I just meet them in the back hand them all off, they close the door, and I know it's all in there. So I know at least they got it. It's not something that's stolen off the counter. I used to leave some stuff on the counter before. Stuff has been stolen, and it's been, uh, you know, a lot of stuff I have to deal with there. So, you know, not fun with that, but it, uh, it happens. Uh, return rate, 0.14%. So um, uh, 13 out of 9,000 uh, transactions people want to return, uh, which, you know, I I put no returns accepted on my stuff, but if it's something that's valid, you know, and I consider valid, like, you know, the case was actually cracked when it came to you, um, you know, I usually offer, it's like, hey, pay for the regrade of it, you know, the, the, the case, or just return it for a full refund. Most people just want it returned. Uh, you know, that happens. So 0.14% right there. It doesn't show, like, what you have to be for that, so I don't, I don't really think that I'm not even sure if that matters. But anyway, here's the whole point of this. Top rated plus benefits, 10% discount. Uh, as a top rated seller, you get 10% off final value fees, as well as a seal on your listings, which, eh, I mean, who cares? Uh, but actually, what you really want is the 10% off final value fees. I don't have that on my stuff because you have to offer uh, same or one day handling time. And for, for most categories, which I'm assuming this one is free 30 day return policy. I'm not sure if that actually is on trading cards, but you know, most of you probably are, uh, you know, can look at that. The free 30 day return, you know, I have no returns on my stuff just because, you know, the type of business I'm at, I pay out people once people pay me. So to have like a flood of returns or somebody might chill it and then try to return it and that they were actually the consigner and the, they just wanted a high price for their item, don't accept returns. That's not really gonna happen. And then a one day, same or one day handling time, we usually ship out within three days of our auctions ending. So, you know, we might have 500, 600, 1,000, 1,200 items that end on a Sunday. Um, it usually takes us about three days to actually package up everything, put all the data into the spreadsheets for the uh, consigners to be able to actually send it to them. So, you know, it only says 14 of my active listings qualify because there's probably some you know, personal buy it nows that I have up there that, you know, were a long time ago and I didn't used to have much in the eBay store that I could send same day or one day handling, but the volume of our auctions, it just, uh, it's not feasible. So I just kind of don't take that 10% off final value fees, which is something that I really, I mean, it's volume. If you look at 800,000, you know, uh, let's say I was paying, let's say, I think if you're an eBay store, you get 12.35%. So you're getting 10% off that. So you're saving one point, you know, 1.2%, you know, 1.2% of 800,000 is eight, eight grand that, um, you know, I would be saving on that. Um, but uh, the one day, same day handling time and uh, free 30 day returns, it's just not a really good business model for con uh, the consignment business model. So to eliminate headaches, and this is what happens sometimes in business to eliminate headaches, you just have to accept a cost. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people when they're kind of scaling up, they don't, they're kind of penny pinching everything along the way. You know, if you've, if you ever talk to Cam or Brian, it's like a lot of, you know, there'll be errors or mistakes, or there'll be stuff that's returned, or maybe, you know, wasn't set the right, you know, might be something that I have to eat. I mean, you talk to them, it's not like I'd make a big fuss. It's like, oh, Oh, well, you know, <laughs> that's just the cost of it, right? And we had one, it was like a, someone sent a, or we had listed accidentally an unlisted, an unlimited dark Charizard, uh, BGS 8.5. I'll actually have it right here. Let's see if I can show it on screen. Right here, as you can see, it's uh, eBay authenticity guaranteed. So eBay, uh, you know, PSA actually authenticated this, sent this to the customer. Now, if you don't, don't know, if someone does authenticate it, it's a final sale. So the customer can't return it. They can't even open it thing but i know it's my error because it was listed as first edition in the title um and it was actually an unlimited card which you know it's probably about a hundred dollars more that this card went for 
if it was just, uh, you know, unlimited. So I went around the system. I said, hey, just send it to me. Just ship it to me. Go outside of eBay. Just send it to my, once I get it, I'll refund you. And I did. Um, and that was, you know, I paid out the consigner based off of a hundred more dollars probably for that card. So it's probably a hundred dollar loss uh, ish on that card. You know, I'm going to resell it just to recoup, you know, my fees. So the consigner went out, uh, but I didn't. But it, th these are things that will just happen. In a business and you just have to accept it. it's not something you can really lose sleep over because you know you're going to be you know looking at pennies what is called pinching pennies or skipping over pounds or something like that you, you know what i mean anyway uh yeah if you guys haven't known about this get a top seller status it's not really that hard as you can see the percentages i mean we are way above almost all these at the very top it's it's really not it's really not that difficult um and if you want to save 10 percent on your stuff instead of paying 12 or 13 percent you pay more like you know uh 12 if you don't have a store and 11 percent something like that um you know that's something you could do or you can just send to uh you know our consignment process and we'll just get it done for you with uh you know for 13.9 percent <laughs> you know uh anyway we have some uh comments that were on the last video uh lauren my wife said the title sent me directly to lululemon 14 likes crushing that like Crushing that like, which you should you should be crushing this, right? Anyway, uh, Cam says, I can't believe you profited $800,000 in Q1. Uh, yeah, Cam actually knows that probably there will be some people who watch that video who think that I did make $800,000. That's not the case. That's just sales. I didn't show the actual profit because, yeah, you know, it's a, a private business and I don't really have to show that. But um, it's good to just show kind of top line sales, you know, of that 800000 I have to pay out probably about 85%, you know, to, to the actual consigners. So at least 15%. Then out of that 15%, I'm paying eBay fees. I'm paying payroll. I'm paying shipping, shipping supplies, uh, overall business insurance, healthcare. Uh, you know, so it, it becomes a very, very small percentage at the end of it. Uh, but Cam knew that. But uh, I think that was that was funny. Mr. Waller says, great video. I'd like a video on building your business culture and or orient uh, orientations and SOP you've set in place. Uh, SOP, standard operating procedures, we have gotten much better. I mean, it used to be kind of fly by the seat of your pants, you know, just get it all in and, uh, you know, kind of hope it works, which, you know, worked for a while, you know, um, when it was just, uh, you know, I was really just still opening and sending back great gem boxes and Cam was really handling most of it. But now that Brian is on here and, you know, hopefully we do continue growing the business, we put a lot of controls in place, which Lauren really uh, spearheaded because she, you know, her job is literally controller, you know, at her job. So, um, yeah, a lot of that was like, hey, if, uh, you know, when you ship out an order, the person who pulls it, you know, out of the box and, you know, looks at it to make sure it's the right cert number, you put a sticky note on it, what the order number is, and you put it, you know, on the, you know, on the desk you know, in the middle of the room, that person does not ship it. Then another person takes it, pulls it off, you know, looks up the order number, makes sure that it's the right card, then they ship it. So that kind of gives the, uh, you know, sense of controls. One person pulls it, the other person ships it. It's not like one person pulls it and ships it, which, you know, helps, you know, because, you know, we're trying to go fast here and efficiently. Um, you know, that really reduces shipping the wrong card. Same thing with, uh, you know, like uh, listing titles, um and actually listing the items the person who lists it there'll be a separate person who will actually review it once again i mean billion dollar companies you know have you know it gets through uh the person who's actually entering the invoices you know the p person and it goes to the staff account and the senior staff account and then the uh, the, the manager and then the controller and the vp and there's still stuff that gets missed all the way up and is caught by like the vp sometimes it's not even caught then right i mean accounting you'll find stuff that's two years old that nobody caught or 10 years old and you have to fix it. So, you know, we still get wrong duplicates and title listings and, but you know, overall it's cut back um, to a very, very minimum amount. And that's really all you can ask for. So there's a control there. Um, you know, payouts are controlled, you know, everybody inputs, you know, once you ship the item, what the consigner made on that card, I then download a report on Friday morning that actually uh, from directly from eBay, that will d then do, uh, you know, and once again, Lauren, thank you for doing uh, Excel, uh, doing some V lookups to where it'll match the actual report from directly from eBay, the listing title to what we have in the spreadsheet, and then put a check that says, hey, 
uh, the report uh, price that it shows that it sold for matches completely. And I'll give like a green box. And if it doesn't, it was a red box. And that's something I have to go back. And it's like, hey, someone might have, you know, fat fingered something where it's like they put $242 when it was $24 or put $2 when it was, you know, $22. I don't know. It happened. I mean, we're just, you know, this is manually entering it and it will catch all those. Um, and then anything that's blank or people that were unpaid and uh, you had to actually put on the cancellations for next week. Um, and that, so that just goes along down the line from, you know, actually opening the boxes live. That's just kind of our check, you know, because if we have to go back and for some reason something is lost, we actually have video evidence. The opening of boxes, I mean, so we try to put controls and, uh, you know, all along the way. Um, so, yeah, building the business culture. I mean, that just came from years of of doing this. I mean, really, the whole business is built on trust. I mean, it, people don't send in three months $800,000 to a random person that they've probably most of these people have never met me. Actually, probably I think of really anybody. I mean, I've gone to one Collecticon, so I probably didn't. I think I have met a couple people, but um, this is just a random person that you don't know sending to a P.O. box or a mailbox uh, to send, you know, almost a million dollars of people's stuff and trust. So it's really just based off trust and then, uh, you know, scaling up from there. Really people say that a business, you know, you can either be, you know, um, good quality, cheap and fast. You have to pick two. You can't have a third, right? If you're, if you're cheap and fast, quality's bad. If you're quality and fast, you know, it's not cheap. If you're, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're fast and quality, um, it's not, or, you know, you know what I mean? You, you, you can't have three of those, but what we're trying to strive for here is to have all three. So we've, I think we're pretty fast compared to, uh, a lot of other, you know, especially outside of eBay, like auction houses, like PWCC or, you know, heritage or golden or anything. Other places, I think we're much faster, a lot more efficient. Um, we're trying to get down the gut. I mean, you think about, I mean, inflation and everything going up in price, we were at 20% in 2020. 17.5 or 20% when we started this in at the end of 2021, 17.5% in 2022, 2023, we're at 13.9%. We've lowered the rate to our customers every single year uh, that we've been doing this assignment. So trying to get it cheap and then quality. I mean, we've been improving the, you know, spreadsheets and scans and listings. And I mean, there's not really a ton you can get on quality there unless we're start and we really need to you know kind of update our you know maybe box openings and, and be more of a advertising presence because you know we have a lot of people who will you know follow our page i think we almost have ten thousand followers on the ebay page but really advertising more on instagram advertising more on youtube you know reach out to other content creators maybe for advertising that will help you know, the consigner as well. So that maybe that's the, you know, quality aspect that we can get into. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the question, Mr. Walrus. Uh, Ryan says that I hear you mentioned something about the PSA again. Are you offering middleman grading service again? Uh, yes and no. We are an official PSA dealer, but we are not sending our cards back to you. So this is something called consignment plus that we haven't really launched yet. We've soft launched it, which means I kind of mentioned it in a video, but it's not on the website. There's not some like fancy thing that I've said, you know, on Instagram or just kind of a public thing that said, really send your stuff. We're ready to go. Um, but yeah, if you're sending your cards in any way to get graded and then you're auctioning, you know, you're that, uh, right. Dir dirty flipper. Right. And you're just, uh, sending stuff in the grid and auctioning it right away. You can just send it to us and we'll get it graded for you for cheaper than you would, uh, doing it all yourself and then send it directly to auction on eBay. But we're not sending the cards back. The the hardest part about middle manning was not submitting. It was debt collecting when people wouldn't pay the grading fees. Now, with this one, I will take your grading fees out of the consignment, but also uh, sending back all the packages because really, when you get all the packages, you only have to send it to PSA. When you get back the package, you have to send it to just a ton of people all over the place. And a lot of people don't respond right away to their emails or ever. Uh, so that's something that's just a lot of customer service that I don't want to deal with again um let's see so blah 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 i'm trying to find some actual questions here um i think snow links was asking the same question about psa uh, kind of thing how we do it um here's some from Pro professor m 
uh, McQ. I started seriously selling on eBay two years ago. Most of my own inventory, cards I personally pulled and graded. I want to start to expand as a service to others, but not having any success attracting customers. Now my personal collection is basically dissolving as I'm trying to maintain sales without any increase in inventory. Sad face. Um, yeah, if you want to start to expand as a service to others, um, I guess my first question is, how are you doing that? Because a lot of that is going to have to do with just kind of years of building it based off of social media presence. It's not like, you know, people have to trust you to send a, a lot of stuff to someone they really don't know. And, uh, you know, that trust only comes from, you know, a whole lot of sales on eBay, which sounds like you're just kind of selling your own stuff. So you might have a ton of stuff and you might have a whole lot of feedback, but how are people even going to know that you provide a service just based off of that? Um, you know, I, I think you got to do more of a, you know, provide some kind of value outside of it and then it will kind of flow from there. Um, and you know, a lot of that has to do with also, you know, to build out your eBay store is you just kept to keep churning through other stuff, you know, trying to flip, um, you know, buy collections and then, you know, the eBay will grow in and of itself. Granted, I mean, remember just because you're growing your eBay store doesn't mean you're going to probably attract a lot of people to, you know, just, just based off of that. I mean, guys, I mean, there are people that have eBay stores that have millions, millions of feedback. There are many that have hundreds of thousands. Um, you're just never going to compete with those people ever. I mean, if even if you s sell a ton all the time, uh, they're just going to have that leap and they're going to get all the eyeballs. Um, but a lot of those people, a lot of people that have a million or hundreds of thousands don't have really any mm, social media presence. And I'm, I'm starting to fall into that trap because I used to be on it a lot, but you get so busy if you get that big that you just, that just kind of falls to the wayside. Um, so that's kind of your advantage that you can go in there and try to create a brand based off of trust or value or, you know, trying to, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, there's so many ways you can, you can kind of build that out of there. Um, and then just get a few customers or you don't need many customers. I mean, I bet out of that like quarter one, 200,000, uh, or 800,000 in sales. I'd have to look at the numbers, but did we have, a hundred people. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was a hundred people that, you know, did that. It, I mean, it, pr it probably was, it might, definitely wasn't 200 people. I will say that. So, you know, and you don't even, so what I'm saying is you don't have to even be that big. You know, you don't have to be like, Hey, it's pokey rev has 2 million. That's all you like. You only need a few hundred people, you know, to really, or, or less to really start. I mean, you just need a, a handful, uh, because then those people, uh, if they really like you, they'll keep coming to you. They'll tell your friends. And remember, this is a community. Someone will just say your name in a Discord and other people will be like, oh, use him. Get that word of mouth and it just kind of snowballs from there. Um, but yeah, start building that a little bit more and I think uh, more will come. <clears throat> um, here we have from James. So many opportunities in the States. I would love to build a business like this in the UK. Unfortunately, we don't have anywhere near the same size TCG market as the US. Our population for only a six of the size for a start. Also, we don't have any quality grading companies over here. Uh, laughing, crying emoji. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I do know that there is uh, a certain privilege of working over here in the United States, just because the eBay is you know founded and built here. There's an enormous uh, community. Um, you know, there's hundreds of millions of people you know, that live here. Um, and just, you know, everything is kind of based around the, I mean, the businesses around here are based here. Uh, so I get that. And, you know, also, you know, we don't do import taxes, which, you know, you have to do in the UK also with the UK, I, I think. And I think in the thread, it said like you had to pay 19%. You know, I knew because I worked, uh, you know, for greater gym for, it was only like six months. It was a crazy time. But I remember Connor, the head of Greater Gym uh, UK, was telling me how they had to pay 20% tax on top of revenue, not on top of profit, on the revenue. You have to pay like 20%, like just right off the revenue, which is insane. So out of that $800,000 in sales, I would have to pay $160,000 in taxes. Like even if I, even if I guess 
you made a lot less of that in profit. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know how it even works in the UK, right? Um, but that, yeah, I I do get all this kind of um, you know trying to help people with you know building their businesses with my experience might not be in your country, uh, just because of based off of kind of the um, the constraints that you have. So uh, I'm sure there are other things that could be done there. Um, you know, if you can get a contact, maybe in the U.S. Maybe you can do like middlemanning. I know that I am potentially working with someone in Australia who is a, a middleman who is collecting a whole lot of middleman submissions, sending it to me. I get the stuff graded uh, for way cheaper than they could, you know, no return shipping, auction off in eBay and then pay and then they pay out the the people. It'd be something like that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can always do. I'm sure people are always wanting to open packs. You know, you could do box breaks and kind of build a reputation around that and then kind of build something slowly there. I don't know. It's not an overnight thing, building trust, building a business, but um, I know you have some constraints over there and that's, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not fun. So yeah. All right. Let's see what we else we got here. That might be, uh, yeah, that might actually be it for the actual questions. There are some, some other comments as well that just say, you know, um, this content is absolute fire. The text knowledge tickles me in all the right places. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have for today. Uh, I guess become a top seller if you want a little advantage there over the competition. You got to sell quick. You got to you got to ship quick though, and uh, you got to accept returns. So that's that's up to you. And also, thanks for the comments. If you have any other comments, let me know. Try to put these out as I can. Of course, this week has been kind of slow, so I've been able to do a couple of videos. Probably the less videos you see, probably the better the business is doing because I'll be too busy to actually try to sit down for this time and edit some stuff. So, uh, so hopefully you don't see me do like six videos in a week because you know, know I'm in trouble then. Anyway, all right, guys. Thanks again for watching and we will uh, talk to you again soon.